Okay, so you want to control your dust extractor remotely, but it has an MVR switch. What do you do? Well, let me help you out. What's happening everyone? Welcome back to the workshop. Now, in a previous video, I set up a wireless control system for my dust extractor. So from multiple positions around my workshop, I can switch on and off my dust extractor wirelessly through this control box here. So I had a full video on that if you wanna check it out. Now, that video raised a lot of questions from a bunch of you guys out there who have dust extractors with built-in NVR switches. And obviously, this setup is not gonna work for you. Trying to remote switch your dust extractor when it has an NVR switch is a bit of a problem so that's what this video is going to be about so we'll take a look at an NVR switch I'll explain to you how they work we'll set it up we'll look at the problem and then I'll give you a few suggestions on what you can do to get around this so that you can control your dust extractor with an NVR switch remotely let's do it Okay, so before we carry on, I just want to thank the sponsor of today's video, and that is Tradeify. Now, Tradeify is a complete job management platform aimed at tradespeople. So if you're a plumber, carpenter, electrician, painter, decorator, toiler, roofer, grounds work, whatever trade you happen to be in, this is for you. It's all your administration in one place. Now, I'm 15 years working as a self-employed electrician, and the biggest headache I have is all my office work, especially when I'm on the tools all day myself. So if it's just you or you have a small crew, definitely check it out. It makes it super simple to generate professional looking quotations and invoicing for scheduling jobs. You can even have your employees input all their timesheets at the end of the week through the, through the app. They can use it. And like I say, it's iOS and Android based and desktop based as well. So it really streamlines all your administration work. It's super simple to fire off an invoice and track that invoice and send automatic reminders when payment is due. So it takes all that stuff out of your head, keeps your flat cash flow going. So definitely check check it out. Like I said, I, I use it. That's why I don't mind recommending it to you guys. And it has really helped me out in my business. So I have a promo code. It's man in shed that gives you 50% off for your first three months. There's also a 14 day free trial. You can sign up to no strings attached. So no credit card or debit card details required. You can just sign up and you can use the full software, check it out, see how it can work and how it can benefit you. I guarantee you like it and it really help you get all that office work into your pocket out of your head and allow you to concentrate on the tools. So Tradeify, check it out. Oh, by the way, all the links are in the description right down there. Down there, check it out. Okay, so very quickly, let's look at an NVR switch. Now I'll open it up and I'll give you guys a look inside in a minute as well. So an NVR switch, you guys will recognize these. You have an emergency stop on the front of them. We have a stop button here, start button here. You'll see these fitted to a lot of woodworking machines. Now what's the point of them? Well, an NVR start switch, it stands for no volt release. So if there's no voltage present, then this switch cannot be engaged. Unlike a standard mechanical switch, when you switch it on, it's on and it stays on. When you switch it off, it opens and it stays in the open position or the off position. Now, this works a little bit differently. When this is energized, when it's plugged in, it's powered up, I press the start button here or the on button, it energizes a coil. That coil then pulls the contact closed. So the coil is wrapped around an iron core, works like a magnet and it pulls the contact closed. So if this thing ever loses power, that coil will de-energize and it will open the contact. So the whole point of that being is if you were ever to say to be working on your table saw, you hit your start button, it pulls in the coil, switches on the motor in your table saw. If the power ever went out when you were working on your machine, say you forgot the power had gone off, that power could come back on, switch that machine back on and start up your table saw. Well, it can't happen with a no volt release switch. So basically, if I unplug this, or if the power drops out, that contact will open because it will de-energize the coil. So the start button switches the coil, the coil pulls in the contact, and that's what sends the power out to the machine. So without voltage present, this can't work. That's basically it. Now let me give you a quick demonstration. We'll have a look inside and you can see it in operation for yourself. Okay, so I'm gonna quickly open up this uh, no volt release switch, give you guys a look inside and you can see the little mechanism in operation. Now, I'm a qualified electrician. I've been doing it for over 20 years. If you're not uh, competent to do electrical work, please stay away from it. Don't do anything I, I tell you from the rest of this video on, but uh, you can tell your electrician what I'm doing here and you can explain what you want done. So it'll give you guys a good idea. But like I said, if you're not competent to carry out electrical work, please stay away from it. It is dangerous. And like I said, I've been doing this for over 20 years. I know what I'm doing. So uh, yeah, let me give you a quick look at this in operation. There's a little kind of visual 
uh, thing we can see here that's moving in and out and you can see the principle of this in operation. Okay, so very quickly, there's the inside of this particular no volt release switch. So here's our power in and it's what it's doing is then sending power to this socket here. So we're in Ireland. So brown is live, blue is the neutral, uh, green and yellow is the earth. That's the same for the UK, I believe Australia and a few other countries around Europe as well. So there's our neutral in, our live in, our neutral out and live out. And there's our switch mechanism. So the coil is contained inside in here. And when I press this start button, it energizes this coil. That will make the contact. You'll see it moving in a second when I show you this and it will join basically the incoming side to the outgoing side, sending power power through here to the socket out to the machine. Now, this is one thing you can do. I don't recommend it, but I've seen a bunch of guys on YouTube do it. They just replaced our no volt switch with a double pole switch. So basically you just get a two pole switch, which will switch the live and the neutral. You put your neutral in, your live in into it and your live out and your neutral out on the other side and just use this as an on off switch and then control it wirelessly. I don't recommend you do that. I'd never recommend you take a safety device off any machine. They're there for a reason. So I'll show you how you wire um, a wireless system in keeping your NVR switch operational. So we'll do that now in a second. So let me just show you this in operation and you guys will get the principle. Okay, I have the NVR switch plugged in so it's energized now. So we have power on the incoming cables. Now there's a little mechanism in here that pops out when the contact is closed. I'm just gonna show you that. It's just a little visual representation. You guys should be able to see it. There you go, it's popped out right there. Now that's held in place by the magnet, so by that core that's energized now, and these contacts are now uh, closed. And if I just hit the stop button, you'll just see how simply that works. It's just a case of push that guy in, it breaks the contact and uh, de-energizes the coil. Now, if I press the stop button again, you can see that that contact is held in place. Now, if I go over to my socket and kill the power, you see that drops out. So your no volt release switch, if it's loses power, if it gets unplugged, and that it will open the switch to make sure the machine can't come back on again. Okay, so that's a basic NVR switch. Now, without getting too into the weeds and drawing out wiring diagrams and everything like that, that's just a nice, simple explanation of how it works. You guys can get some understanding. You can probably start to see the problem now already with trying to control a machine remotely with an NVR switch built into it. It's not possible. So let me demonstrate that for you now. And then I'm gonna give you guys some solutions if you wanna do a wireless system like what I have here and if your machine has a built-in NVR switch. So let's do that. Okay, so just to illustrate the problem here in case some of you guys aren't getting what I'm actually talking about and why some people are worried about NVR switches and wireless control. Here's my wireless control unit. So I put in a contactor in here that has a wireless control unit inside which switches the contactor. That's connected to these wireless switches which I have around my shop. So just a case of me hitting that. Here the contactor comes in, hit it again contact that goes out and that sends power to this socket which sends power to my dust extractor. Now the problem is is if there's an NVR switch in circuit which is what I have done here. So I'm plugged into my NVR switch and I have my dust extractor plugged into that. Now obviously you can see I can't send power to my dust extractor without having to come back over here and switch on my NVR switch which completely uh, gets rid of the wireless uh, option. So that's no good. So if I hit this on, dust extractor is running. Switch it off with my wireless switch. Now I can't switch it back on because the, this has now de-energized and you have to come back over and reset it, which is the issue. So what we now have to do is put this wireless system after the NVR switch. So we gotta get this in between your motor and your NVR switch. I'll give you a quick warning diagram on how to do that now. And that's the solution we're gonna come up with here. So let's have a look at that. Okay, so let me draw it out and let's look at what we need to do here. So what we have now at the minute, I'm just gonna draw a kind of a basic wiring diagram. So we just have two lines at the top. So that's our live and that's our neutral. And if I take a live down this way, we'll take a neutral down as well. So we have a live and neutral into our contacts on our NVR switch and they are normally open contacts. We we'll just draw them as open. So we we'll just draw this box here and that is our NVR switch, and then they go out to our motor. So that's what we have at 
the minute. So we switch on or off our NVR switch and it close those contacts and send power to the motor. But we want to get a wireless system into this. And we want to put it after the NVR switch, not before, because like I just showed you, if you put it before the NVR switch, if you de-energize this, then you have to keep going back over to it to re-energize it or to switch it back on. And it's no longer a wireless system. Now, you may also have in here a VSD. That's a variable speed drive. So a lot of, say, higher end or more powerful dust extractors, you will be able to control the speed on them and they will have a VSD. So we want to put it in after that. So I'm just going to draw in the VSD without explaining too much about how they work, of what the circuit will look like when we put in our wireless system. So again, we want to take down our live from here neutral from here so we have live in neutral in to our nvr switch so we call this our nvr switch we are again we have our two contacts inside in here just like that and out of that we will be going into whether or not your machine has a vsd and again that's just a variable speed drive to change the frequency to the motor to just up and down the rpm and now right here is where we want to put in our contactor so essentially all we're doing is putting in an additional contact right here that we can switch remotely so it has to go after the nvr switch after the vsd and before the motor so that's your wireless control box right there and this will be controlled remotely from our wireless switches so this is what we need to get into our head or we all need to get into our heads is that we need to um put this after the vsd and after the uh, low volt release switch as you can see the problems that i've demonstrated now Seeing this on your particular machine, every machine is going to be different. You might have to do this internally in the controls of the machine itself. Again, this is where you have to get an electrician involved, or you might be able to see the flex or the cord coming out of the control unit down into your motor, which you can then break through this contactor and switch remotely, just like I did in my wireless control video. So if you've not seen that video and you wanna see how that's done, I go through it and I show you how to actually wire up this wireless unit and connect it to these wireless switches so it's that wireless unit has to go in here after the nvr switch and after the vsd uh, and then on to the motor so hopefully that makes sense and hopefully it kind of gives you guys that were asking me this question of where you need to put this so you can get it to work with your no volt release switch on your dust extractor and again hopefully that makes some sense Okay, so just so we're clear on this, and this is only a visual representation so you can see where this is going in the circuit. Obviously, this will probably be built into your machine. That's why you're having problems. So that's gonna sit right here before my wireless control. So you remember, we have a live and neutral into this and we have a live and neutral out of this. So we take the live and neutral out of this and we pass it through those contactors, then on to the motor, if that makes sense. So what you can do is, like I said, you can take the cord that's going through the motor, you can split this and break it through this contactor here and that will give you your wireless control. So hopefully that makes sense. Now what you will need to do then to make your dust extractor operate is you will have to come in and plug in your dust extractor, hit on your start button on your NVR switch and then operate it wirelessly through your wireless controls around your shop. And that will switch your dust extractor wirelessly. So there you go, hopefully that helps. Okay guys, so there we go. That's just a little bit on NVR switches and a little bit on wireless controls of your dust extractor when there's an NVR switch in place. Now, I have a full video on how to wire that wireless system that I put in. So I'm not going to get into it in this video again. I'm not going to show you how to wire all that because there's a video all on it and I'll just be repeating myself and doing the same video over again. But it's basically just a case of if your dust extractor has just a basic NVR switch in it, nothing else, it's just take the power coming out of the NVR switch, so the live and neutral out of the NVR switch and pass it through that uh, wireless system that I have there and then on to your motor. If there's a VSD and everything in place, look for the cord going to the motor and break that through the wireless contactor. That's how you will do that. And again, if you're unsure, if you're not competent to carry electrical work, please don't do it. Get a registered electrical contractor. The main purpose of this video is just to let you guys know that if you have an NVR switch on your dust extractor, yes, you can control it wirelessly. But again, don't do the work yourself if you're not competent to do so. It's not safe. Electricity is dangerous at the end of the day. And another thing to point out is if you go at the internal wiring of any of the machines, you may void the warranty. So just be 
be aware of that before you do it. If you're still happy to proceed, then by all means proceed. Having a wirelessly controlled dust extractor is a great advantage. It's been brilliant since I've installed the system in my workshop. So that's it kind of it guys. I'm going to get out of here now. Hopefully you've found that informative. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Again, the whole point of it was just to answer some questions and a whole pile of emails that I haven't been able to get to about wireless controls when there's an NVR switch in place. Yes, you can absolutely do it. I recommend you leave your NVR switch in place. Do not take it out of circuit like I've seen some guys do. It's a safety switch at the end of the day and it does provide an extra level of safety if the power was to ever cut out and that machine was ever to come back on without you knowing. Uh, the NVR switch is there to stop that happening. So leave it in circuit. You can still control your dust extractor wirelessly. Again, that's the whole point of this video. So there you go, guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed that. Hopefully it gets you guys some good information as always. Uh, give it a thumbs up if you have liked it. I'm going to get out of here now. It's very warm. I might just have a beer, I think. I'll see you in the next one, guys. Take it easy.